Yo, this is how you make kaibi. Ooh! All right, so here's what we need. Two pounds of kaibi, Ooh. half a cup of soy sauce, yes, three tablespoons of sugar, uh -huh. two tablespoons of sesame oil, Bam. just a little bit of black pepper, Ooh. two tablespoons of sesame seed, Bam. one and a half tablespoon of garlic, uh -huh. 75 gram of onion, Ooh. and one and a three fourth cup of water, Ooh. two tablespoons of sake, yes, and 100 yes. grams of Korean pear. And that's how you make some fire LA kaibi. All right, so now we got all the ingredients ready. Let's make the sauce. All right, so first thing first, we got half a cup of soy sauce. Ooh. Three tablespoon of, three tablespoon of sugar. Boom. Bop. Bop. Uh-huh. And then we have two tablespoon of sesame oil. and just a little bit of black pepper. And a tablespoon of sesame seed. All right, so here we have it. This is the base of the kaibi sauce. It's very similar to a purgogi recipe that we put out the other day. But we're gonna flare things up right now and step it up a notch, and we're gonna bring the blenders out. All right, mix that joint up. And that's the base of the kaibi sauce. So the kaibi sauce is very similar to the purgogi sauce. Uh, if you haven't checked yet, you know, we released the purgogi recipe the other day. Check that out. Um, so yeah, this is the base, the base of the kaibi sauce. But we're gonna really level it up and we're gonna bring out the blenders out now, all right? All right, so this is the base of the kaibi sauce. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to take it to the next level. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna get the blender out. All right, first thing first, one and a half tablespoon of garlic. 75 gram of onion. And 100 grams of Korean pear. That's that secret right there, fam. You gotta use the Korean pear. And if you don't have Korean pear, it's okay to use a Chinese pear or just any other pear. But we're making a Korean LA kaibi right now. That's why I'm saying we gotta use the Korean pear. But I'm not gonna lie, guys, that's the Chinese pear. Because Korean pear is out at H Mart right now. But work with what you guys got, all right? So I prefer, you know, I, I, I highly recommend for you guys to use a Korean pear. But if you guys can't find Korean pear for whatever reason, just use a, you know, use a different type of pear. And then this is gonna be one and three fourth cup of water. All right, so there you have it. So this is gonna really take the kaibi flavor to the next level. Lock these boys up. Oh, there you go. Boom. Are we gonna blend these jones up? Blend these jones up! All right, so here's, this is what's gonna really take it to the next step. So right here, we have the base kaibi sauce that we just made. Ooh, the garlic, the pear, the onion. This is where, ooh. All right, so one last tip. Usually I would add two tablespoons of sake, but right now I don't have sake at home. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna add a tablespoon of soju and a tablespoon of mirin. But I highly, I highly, 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 highly recommend you guys to use two tablespoons of sake. Sake, sake. All right, so there goes a tablespoon of mirin. And, uh, oh, that's a lot and a tablespoon of soju. A little shot for the kaibi, a little shot for Chef Chris Cho. Ooh. All right, so here we have it. We have the, all the flavors in there from, we took the basic LA kaibi sauce and we flavored it up with some garlic, onion, and pear. 
some little bit of sake, soju. And now we're gonna throw in the kaibi and marinate this joint. So here we have two pounds of kaibi, aka the short rib. When you guys go to H Mart or any Korean market, damn, why is it so hard to put this glove on? So when you guys go to a Korean market, just ask for the LA Kaibi or just look for sliced short ribs. Here it is. You ready? Boom. Bam. All right, so we're gonna let that sit right in. We're gonna let that marinate. I don't like these black sesame seed. All right, so we're gonna let that marinate for a whole day. And we're gonna wrap that joint up. And we're gonna marinate it for about a whole day. Ooh, damn, I don't have space. 12 hours later. Ta da! Alright, guys, so you guys have to marinate it at least for 12 hours. Because if you guys don't marinate it, the flavor is not gonna really get in there. So make sure to marinate it at least for 12 hours. All right, so moment of truth. Boom. Ooh, look at that. It's ready to go. All right, now let's get to the cooking. So high heat, splash of oil. So I definitely prefer cooking these on a grill. That's where the flavors really come out. But we don't have a grill right now, so we're gonna cook it in a pan for now, all right? But if you want your kaibi to taste next level restaurant quality, make sure to, you know, grill it on the grill. Grill it on the grill, grill it on the grill. Danny sent me this today. Oh, sorry. I like that. So it's one of the, all right, all right, this joint is hot. All right, so shout out to Danny's man. His name is Tahoe, a producer from Blackpink. Just wanted to throw that in there. Yabu sale. All right, so we have high heat. Like I always say, how do you test if the pan is hot or not? I just get a sprinkle of water. Uh, it's not settling in enough, you know? So we're going to wait a little bit. But when there's oil and the pan is hot and you get a little splash of water and you it should make the sizzle noise. So that sounds like it's good to go. All right. All right, now it's really good to go. So here you go. Woo. All right, so in a super high heat, I like to go about three to four minutes on each side. It really depends on your grill. It really depends on your heat. So make sure to keep your eyes in the grill, in the pan. Yeah, there's nothing I could really do but let that cook now, so. All right, so, ooh, now you see the smoke. When you see smoke, it means it's it's rounding up right there. So you gotta keep your eyes and your barbecue, especially when you see smoke. Whew. So I love this color, but honestly, I would even went a little bit more uh, I would have even seared it even more. 
but that's lightly brown. I want it even more darker. So we, let's go a little longer this time. Let's go risk it for the biscuit about three, four minutes. And you don't have to touch the pan, sear it. Really let that sit and don't touch it for a whole three minutes. All that flipping, 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 you know? It's like when you're making a steak, you're not flipping it over, watching it. You gotta you got trust the process. And guys, if I could give some tips, when you guys are making LA high you have to almost cook it to a little bit over medium. Um, I know when we're cooking steak, we're going for that rare, the medium, you know? But when you're making LA high you don't want like red in your high if you guys ever ate LA Garby, you guys probably never ate a medium rare LA Garby. All right, so that's a key point. All right, so that joint is kind of burning right there. So we're gonna flip that over, let that go a little more. Woo! Now that's the color I'm going for, right there. Dang, what's going on with the wing over there? Ooh, that's the perfect consistency I'm going for. All right, when you feel like it's almost done, now we're gonna grab our kaibi. I'll make sure to cut these shongs. You see what I mean? Like, here, it's kinda still rare. You wanna cook it fully off. LA kaibi is not a steak, guys. Don't keep that drawn American, keep it Korean and authentic. You make a rare kaibi, somebody's mom gonna smack ya. So right now, after we flipped it for two to three minutes on each side, when you cut it, you can tell that it's little bit still medium rare. We're gonna make sure it's fully cooked off. Also, you see some of the blood coming out, so. Ooh. Ooh. All right, while the paint is still hot, I'm gonna chop up some onions. Cause I love the kaibi, the onions that comes with the kaibi when it's cooked off the sauce. That's the best. You know what? Let's just eat all the onions. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Save these peas, huh? Kaibi. Kaibi sauce right there. Ooh. It's a little burn. All right, while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna just make some garnish for the kaibi. What I would have actually done is, I would have actually put the onions underneath the kaibi and put the kaibi on top. And then after that, I would garnish with some scallions on top. Just like that. And top it with some sesame seed, as always for most Korean food. Whew. So when you guys plate the kaibi, make sure to plate it like meat over bones. Some people plate it like this and all they show is the bone side, but you're supposed to actually plate it like this, meat over meat, instead of bone over bone. Cause you don't want to present it to people just showing the bones, right? You're, on, you're almost only showing it, showing the meat. Cause there's no point of showing the bones when you're, you know, when you're showing the fire ass meat. So anyway, that's it. Alright guys, I totally forgot to do this while I was cooking, I got distracted. But while you guys are cooking it on the pan, if you guys have a torch, just torch your kaibi. Especially if you guys are not cooking it on the grill, it'll give the same flavor and the taste as if you guys are doing a barbecue outside. 
because the torch is gonna, you know, give it that extra smoky flavor. So yeah, if you got one of these smoky joints, you know, if you guys got one of these torch, but do it when it's in the pan, not after you plate it. Mm. Mm. So guys, I'm literally giving you guys the the recipe that's gonna taste better than most of the Korean restaurants you guys go to. So I'm sorry, restaurants. I'm sorry, chefs, for putting out these you know secret recipes out. As far as I know, they call this the LA Gabi because a lot of Korean people moved to LA before and then they couldn't find the same cut as the Korean Kaibi. So what they did was they asked for sliced short ribs and they came up with this and this literally became the official LA Gabi. So even in Korea, they refer to this as LA Gabi. That's dope. I should come up with my own little version and call it the Philly Gabi. We got sugar left. So ask him why you're always on your PJ. <laughs> guys, thank you guys for watching. I literally tested this recipe about three times. Shared it with my family and also shared it with my wife and just ate it for myself. So this is fire fam. I'm literally giving you guys the recipe that this is gonna taste a lot better than most restaurants that you guys go to. So sorry, Korean restaurants, but I'm out here spilling out all these secret recipes. All right, so I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And we out this joint. Yo, Michelle. Mm-hmm.